Uh, we wanted to do a little something different today and kind of invite you into one of our kitchen counter conversations. You know, this is stuff that we do all the time, having conversations about life, life's challenges, the different things that we face. And we really wanted to invite you in on this one because this one we're talking about living normal. Whether or not we're going to turn backwards or we're going to move forward to a new normal. You probably experience one of the good or one of the bad things, or both, um, during this time, during this pandemic, during the quarantine, during the shutdown. And, you know, some of the good things that people encountered during this was taking a much needed break. You know, too often we're so busy with the outside stuff. We always deal with the outside world. We fill our time up with that. And we just don't take a break for ourselves. The other thing is, is having time with family. There's so many people, so many families that have they have grown stronger. They spent more time together in these last six months, maybe, that they just grew stronger. They built better bonds together. And one of the other things is, is that people just slowed down. Life slowed down. And I really think it, it really opened our eyes to some new things on how to just slow down in life. And another thing is, is that people completed a whole lot of projects. <laughs> house projects, probably painted some stuff, got some things done around the house that was just much needed stuff, or maybe started up a new business. Um, another thing is, is and I can over, I can really relate to this, is the overexertion and overwhelming feeling because of the pandemic. You know, you would think that, oh, everybody's home, everything's great and lovely, but it is overwhelming. Because when you're used to a certain normal, and then your life changes into now this new normal, it does, it takes you through a spin. And, and sometimes it can take a minute for you to get back on track with that. But one of the things that I did write in one of my articles, and I don't know if it was this one that we're talking about today, but I really talked about how we really need to see this pandemic as an opportunity. You know, <laughs> we, live, we live life as go, go, go. You know, it's like everything's go, go, go. We cannot slow down, we cannot take a pause, we cannot reevaluate what is going on in our lives. And then we just, we're just 100 miles per hour. That's all it is, 100 miles per hour. But we need to take a minute and, and actually see this as an opportunity to maybe make a difference, maybe make a change. And so one of the things, and I know that I am personally, I am a personal, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, like I, I've said this statement myself, and I know so many people of it else have, is making the statement of, I wish everything could just go back to normal. I can't wait until everything gets back to normal. And I said this because I just wanted things to go back to normal. But then it made me realize how this whole thing, that statement in itself, puts you in bondage. Yeah, because, you know, as we're going through this, we've done some great things. Yeah. A lot of people have done some great things. You know, a lot of people moved forward, you know, and, and when they were moving forward, the economy and everything, jobs yeah. start to come back, and then it kind of gets people to go backwards, yep. revert back to the old way of doing things. And, you know, so the question is right now is, why would you want to go back? Yeah. Why would you want to go back during this time? Because, obviously, there were some things that need to happen, you know, during that break that had to happen in your life. So, one of the examples I want to talk about is, you know, the, you know, talk about a dog. You know, most of us have pets. And, you know, and, and a dog may vomit. And 9 out of 10, a dog, when a dog vomits, you know, they vomit, and then later they'll come back, and they go back and start eating again. You probably think, oh, well, that's nasty. Well, yeah, that is nasty. <laughs> that is nasty, but take it from a human perspective, okay? So take it from like, you know, God has placed some, there's some things in your life that God is trying to get out of you. So God is trying to get some things out of you, so you spew those things out, all right? So God needs to get that out because God is trying to get something else new in your life. He didn't need, he doesn't want that to be in you anymore. So you get that out. But then what happens is most people, when they spew out those things, they bomb it, they place it on the side and they never clean it up. All right? They never clean it up. Why did they never clean it up? Because they can get an opportunity to go back to that one thing that made them feel comfortable. And that's what we don't need to. God doesn't want us, whatever God wants to do in our lives, you know, he don't want us to go backwards. He wants us to move forward. And we have to be mindful of those things right now because God doesn't want us to go backwards. We should want to go backwards because some of the things that happens in our lives is that as we're dealing with this, uh, these issues is, our mindset, our thought life was we were excelling. We was moving forward. Our mind was getting a lot clear. Thought. Yeah, which we thought. Yeah, because you know, at that time before, before everything shut down, you know, you know, the jobs, we had some routine on our jobs, we had a routine in our homes, all that stuff got dis disrupted. Yeah. And then once we had to go from when you said the new normal, well the new normal is I had to change my normal pattern. And when I changed my normal pattern, now the things that I used to do, 
I'm not doing those things anymore. Mm -hmm. And then now, it's like now that the, the economy, everything is coming back, now we want to go back to that same structure again? Because you can't go back to that same structure because that's not normal anymore because now you're doing some new things. Because why? God is trying to do something new into your life. He don't want you going back to that old way. And we have to remind ourselves of those things because it's challenging. And I don't know about you, it's been very challenging to want to go back. I know I've been, I've been witness to it. I, 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 some things I want to go back to, but things you can't. You can't go back to it. Because if you try to go back to it, you're not going to be the same. There's never going, you're not going to be the same person. You're not going to be able to do your same routine because everything else around you has changed. Because what has changed? We're a mask. Everywhere we go. Yeah. Everyone and that's like the new normal. Yeah, that's the new normal. Yeah. But I think that the, the reason why we go back, we, we constantly go back to what we're used to, is because we, we're more comfortable being comfortable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, that's what we're used to. A lot too much of us, I feel like we, we're, we live on fear. Hmm. So we don't like to try new things. We don't like to step out on faith and try new things or do something different. Or we just get complacent. And I feel like you hit it on the head because God will sometimes force us to do something that we're not willing to do ourselves. You know, like, one of the scriptures that I like, and um, when it's talking about this topic, you know, of what normal really looks like, and I wish I, I, wish I knew, I wish I wrote it down what, uh, where it directly is from, but it's talking about how you can't put new wine in old wineskins. And why is that? Because if you put new wine into old wine skins, it will burst. It can't hold. The new cannot be held within the old. It's new. And so when we're talking about doing a new thing, when we talk about normal, we gotta we have to stop going back and we have to start looking forward. Um, one of the things that I put in the article was I listed down different areas of our lives that we really need to examine. We really need to take an assessment of these areas. And what can we do differently? What can we take from what we learned in the pandemic, take from what we did in the pandemic, so that we don't go back to our old ways when it comes to these areas? And those areas is talking about our time and priorities. It's, it's our financial decisions and our responsibilities. It's our lifestyle arrangements. Um, it's our family and our relationships. It's our spirituality. It's our mental health, meaning your, your mind and your body, because your mental health is not just in your mind. Right. And it's also, your interests, your hobbies, and habits. Habits, you know, they say, I always say all the time, from what I've, I, I was told a long time ago, that 30 days, if you do something for 30 days, it, you now form a new habit. Well, we've been in this thing for months. <laughs> so maybe we need to take this and change our habits if we have not already changed them. We need to look at these areas and start to re-examine them. So time and priority. How are we spending our time now that the world's starting to open back up again? Yeah, so are you going back to your old ways, or are you doing something new? Yeah, because, you know, you keep triggering me. Like I said, this is our kitchen conversation, you know, because sometimes when you're talking about time and priorities, sometimes they didn't realize that we were bondage. You yeah. know, time and priorities yeah. can be a, some type of bondage for most yeah. people, you know, because they're on a regimented, regimented schedule all the time. I got to get, I got to do this at this time. I got to make sure these products get done. I got to do we this. We are guilty of that. Exactly, we are. We definitely are guilty of that because but we don't, we don't realize that, that how much bondage we were in until everything started to slow down because when things start to slow down, that's when you start to see things a lot clearer yeah. because, you know, when you constantly want to go, 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 go all the time, you're yeah. going to miss a lot of things and you don't realize that that's a form of bondage. Yeah. You're so handcuffed because yeah. you're handcuffed to your time. You're handcuffed to those priorities. You're handcuffed. You're living in a state of bondage. Yeah. And then you, when, when you do those types of things that when you're out of it, you just go, you know, wow, I have so much time. Or, you know, I have less priorities. Well, you know, you never realized that. Or your you priorities were, change. Yeah, your priorities, exactly. But you didn't realize how much bondage yeah. that you were in during that time frame because you had to wait for everything to slow down. And yeah. then you go, man, I do have a lot more time than my day. But that was a form of bondage. And you get to re-examine what things are really important. Yeah. I think sometimes we we get to a place where we we do so much that we think it's important. It's really not important. Right. You know, we do things. I mean, I always say this on the job all the time. Um, so we, um, you're, you're still in distribution, um, supply chain. I used to be in it as well. And I remember always saying all the time is that we do. So I like to look at things and see how can I make it more efficient, more effective. You know, and I always love, how can I save time? How can I be more productive? Hence, why this platform is about being healthy and productive. You know, because that analytical side of me still has to be in there somewhere. But I'm always looking at, what are we doing in our day? 
that you're trying to check off the list. Well, what is so not even necessary to do anymore? I know that you do that sometimes, where sometimes you'll purposely go a week or two without even sending specific reports or specific analytics just to see, is anybody even noticing it's not even there? Yep. But sometimes we look at, we have things on our list that we consider a priority, but is it really a priority? Like, was it a priority six months ago, but it's really not necessary now? We have to constantly keep examining different things in our lives so that we can do it differently. Yeah, because you know what? This thing called life. Sometimes it is really not easy. No, it's not. It's not easy, you know, and as we're, we're getting mature, you know, we're coming up with these different concepts, these different ideas of what we can do differently. But we have to understand, too, is the things that we used to do was not good for us. Why do we want to go back to that again? Yeah. Why would we want to go back to that same state? It's the same thing going back when the dog vomits. We don't need to go back to that same state because now that everything is slowed down, now you're in your new normal. Was what you were saying is, was it really worth party? Did I really need to do it? You know, how much time have you saved? The other thing, too, yeah. because we always yeah. talked about money, because you talked about finances yeah. earlier, but also, too, you know, the things that you used to spend money on, yeah. you know, you didn't really need to spend that money anyway. You, yeah. you were just a waste because now you're starting to see, I know that's one of the things, it's now you start to see there could have been some things in your finances that there was on that reoccurring deal. Now that you you had time now to scrutinize your finances, you probably has found probably about two, three hundred dollars that you could got rid that you can put back in your pocket now because yeah. why? You had now the time to go back and look at it because why? It wasn't a priority to actually do it. So now it's a priority now because why? The situation is dictated for you to start looking at your finances because now you got the time to do it. So now you can make better decisions with your finances because you didn't have the time and one, it wasn't a priority, but now it's a priority now, now that you got the time to do it. Yeah, I think sometimes like when it comes to finances, I think one a couple things that we've learned during this pandemic is we have to stop living to please other people. And I know that that's something that and you know that's something that we've been on, on a real on a kick about in the last couple of years that we need to stop trying to live like the Joneses. We need to stop trying to please other people. We need to stop trying to fit into certain modes that other people say that you should live. We really need to live based on the convictions of our heart uh, yeah. and what God mm -hmm. is calling us to do yeah. with our money, with our living arrangements. Mm -hmm. You know, and so one of the things I realized when it came to finances is that in this pandemic, I think we all realized we are living. You know that they say live above your means, live below your means, or you're living at your means. Oh. I feel like a lot of us are living at our means and we are stretching it <laughs> to above. You know, where we don't have that savings that we that we wanted to have or that we should have had. So now we're, we're, we're literally living on paycheck to paycheck and we realize we felt the burn because people stopped getting paychecks, you know? Or is it that maybe you had to reevaluate that your living arrangements really wasn't necessary, you know? That's, I think that is a, that's a, a project that we're working on right now is because we really want to skim down. We really want to get to a place where we have a good thousand dollars a month at least, not even limiting it at least, to be able to give to other people that need it. You know, but in order for us to do that, we need to scale down. We have houses, we have rooms in our house that we don't even visit for probably about a good month or so. You know, and it's just too big that why do you need all that space? You only need to live, you only need to do, you only need to be in your bedroom to sleep. <laughs> why does it need to be that big? <laughs> you know, but we really need to scale down and re-examine every area in our lives. What's healthy and what's unhealthy? And we need to strip away those things that are unhealthy, health unhealthy, get rid of those old normals. So that we can create some new healthy normals. Yeah, we do because you know, you know, God did bless us with a beautiful home. So don't we don't want to take it that way. God yeah. bless us with a nice, beautiful home, you know, but we take it into the heart that God wants us to do more. Yeah. You know, He wants us to do more than what He's given us because we want to be a bigger blessing to other people. Because yeah. that's really most important. You know, that's God's heart. He wants us to bless other people. Because God yeah. blessed us where well, we we want to position ourselves so that we can be a bigger blessing to other people. And that's to be a blessing. blessing. Absolutely, you're blessed to be a blessing, but that's the reason why we cannot have our same thinking yeah. that what we used to have, like, yep, I gotta have, uh, what else can we get? I need to get this bigger house. Yeah. Uh, we can't have that same mentality. We can't have that same type of thinking because during this time that, you know, these last six months, you know, a lot of us have read books. A lot of us have gotten yeah. more mature in life. We, some of us have hit our spiritual level in life where we're spending more time with God. But so now we're getting more wiser in, in things in life. So now we, we understand that, you know, the things that we have right now, maybe we just don't need it. Maybe, you know, God is talking to us to do something else outside of that. Or, you know, because if God is talking to me to do something different, that means I can't do what I used to do because if I try to hold on to it, then I can't move forward. It's like, you know, like a balloon. A balloon can't go as high when there's somebody on the other end of the string. It only it has a limitation. 
Yeah. Imagine yeah. if you cut that string. There's no more limitation. You can go as high as you can. Well, see, God wants to cut that string. He wants us to cut the, the our strings that what we have so he can take us higher. And that's the thing. But we can't go any higher if we constantly keep going backwards. We constantly want to do those same old things because why? Our mental state of mind has to shift. We got to, when God shifts, we got to shift. When God moves, we got to move. We can't sit here and be stagnant. God yeah. is on one side, and we're still over here. Well, we got to keep up with God. God ain't going to keep up with us. We got to keep up with him. Yeah. And our lifestyles and everything what you're talking about, our lifestyles have to change because why? We got to keep up with what God is doing. Yeah. How our ranges, our lifestyles, and what's our families, all of those things have to shift. Yeah. I think, it, you know, when you think about somebody who, is always stuck into what they've always done, it's a form of dysfunction. And sometimes living in comfort is a form of dysfunction. Um, you know, it reminds me of this movie that I saw where they went over, they went to this um, casino and they all they ate these lotus flowers and stuff. And it put them in this fog and they were there for days. And it's, it's kind of like that, where you live in this fog and you're just doing it over and over again and you don't even realize it. But it's a form of dysfunction because you can't change, or let me put it this way, change is healthy, and you can't grow without change, okay? You know, we talk about a, a, a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. How does that happen? Change. It, it has to happen. You ha In order for you to evolve, you have to change. And so you kind of let go of those things that happened in the past. Let go of the things you've always done. Stop with that. This is how I've always done it. Get that mindset out of your head and just start to be more open. Start to be more, like, be more enthused to do something different. What can I do different today? You know, and start to develop that in your in your day, in your routine, in your personality. Like, start to love change. I I am a person where I love change now. I used to, I remember, I used to work in Virginia, and I had to have my boss tell me, Crystal, change is good. Like, I remember that. I remember him, and I remember that conversation, and he had to tell me that. And I'm like, why do we have to keep changing things? We just changed it. Why do we have to change it again? And I remember him telling me, there's certain conversations in my life that stick with me to this day. And it's that conversation that says, change is not always bad. And so ever since then, I really just started to develop this appreciation for change, to do something new. You cannot grow. You cannot become better unless you change. And God is always trying to strive for you to be better. Yeah, because see, so, so you're talking about change and you're talking about better. Okay, so then let's look, take it from a... a Action from growth. Just like from a growth perspective, because you're gonna to have to change. When you were when you were conceived, you had to change, you had to grow into a baby. Yep. And in a baby, there's different stages in life. Well, you can will never stay the size of a baby without going through change. Yeah. You have to go through change in life. You cannot go, because even the Bible, you cannot go back to when you took your mother's womb and you're 50 years old. Mm -hmm. You can't go back. So why are you trying to go? Exactly. Why would you <laughs> want to go back? But see, but change, that's what you're saying. Change is good. We're going to have to go through changes, and we're going to have to understand the change that we're going through. So sometimes we might not truly understand why we go through these changes, but at least embrace it and learn from the changes. And then as you embrace it and learn from the changes, you've got to move forward. Because I want to make sure we get that point. In everything that we do, we're moving forward. Because you cannot go backwards. Because a, a train, okay? It is very difficult for a train to go backwards because when a train starts to move forward, that momentum, momentum. is coming, that momentum is going, it keeps going, it's yeah. going. To actually slow that train down is going to be very, very difficult. Yeah. It's going to take miles and miles to slow that train down. That's the reason why in our lives that we got to constantly let our momentum carry us forward. Yeah. Because you don't want to go backwards because if you start to go backwards, it's going to take a lot of more momentum to pull you backwards in your life mm -hmm. instead of you moving forward. Because it's easier for you to move forward than it is for you to move back. And that's the reason why change is good. Change is good because it helps you to move forward. You know, and you might sputter throughout the way, but once that momentum gets going, you start to embrace it. Boom, watch what happens. You start to take off. Yeah. Change, so, I mean, it, everybody has a different perspective when it comes to change, and, and depending on what kind of change. Oh, yeah. You know, we just got done having a conversation with our kids, and, and having, <laughs> <laughs> like, hello, summer's almost over, we need to, same thing we do every year, we have to start to create a different schedule. We have to go back to some more routine, and we have to start tailoring back the time we go to bed, we need to start doing more or more, get back on our chores schedule, and start doing some new things, getting prepared for our school that's coming around, and change. They don't have that mindset yet. So, you know, it depends on what you appreciate is going to be whether or not your, what your attitude is going to be towards.
towards it. And so, you know, I really hope that with this, these different areas of your life, that you can really take them and examine them. You know, I only, my way of reaching people is I only know how to be transparent and personal. You know, that's how I reach people is, what is my experience? What did I go through? How can I help you with what I went through? That's what I know. And when we're talking about like time and priorities, I really had to examine my priorities. What was more important? What was not, you know? What was I spending my time on? What was not needed? Like we really had to examine it. I really had to examine it to be able to, to deal with this new normal that was happening and so that I wasn't reverting back and causing myself some overwhelming stress because I was trying to fit into what we've always done. But what we've always done is no longer here anymore. I had to shift into this new normal. And I, in order to do that, I had to change and shift my time and priorities. And then it's financial decisions and responsibilities. We just re-examine what, what we're doing financially. What, are, what things are absolutely necessary and what things aren't. Like, always, always look for ways to, to re-examine your finances. The other thing is living arrangements. Look at where you live. That's like, again, that's our project. That's what we're, that's what we're working on right now. The other thing is family and relationships. I'm going to tell you right now, your materialistic things are going to mean nothing the day that you die. And what will be meaningful and what will ca carry on your legacy is your family and your relationships. Those are the people that are going to really be there. They're going to be the ones that are going to support you. They're going to be the ones that are going to talk about you even long after you're gone. And our spirituality. You know, I when it comes to this, I know that we really dug deep into the Word of God during this time. And one of the things that I'm always asking God for is wisdom. Wisdom and discernment constantly. And that is what I live by, is wisdom and discernment. I'm always asking God, give me some insight. Give me some insight into this thing. And so that's the reason why when, when we talk about life's challenges and different things that we face in life, I just see it in a different way. The other thing is mental health is your mind and your body. Take care of yourself. You know, a lot of people talk about during this, um, during this time of the pandemic and the shutdown that everybody had all these goals <laughs> to exercise, to lose weight, to get fit, and it ended up being the opposite end because we ended up getting lazy, you know? <laughs> but we do have to put time and attention to our body and our mind. We need to exercise our mind. What do we read? What do we watch? What do we listen to? Who are we talking to? We really need to exercise our mind, but we also need to exercise our body. What are you feeding it? What are you putting in it? What chemicals are you possibly putting in it that's, that's affecting your mental health? We need to look at those things because all of those things are important. And let's not look at what we've always done. Let's start looking at what we can do new. And our interests, hobbies, and habits. Change the things that were not good for you. And whatever you did in this pandemic that was good, keep that momentum going. And things that were bad, let them die. Let them let them fall by the wayside and keep on with that momentum of doing the good. You know, one of the things is just uh, in the Bible in Galatians, Apostle Paul wrote this in one of the scriptures. And he said, who has bewitched you? He was talking to the people when they converted back, and they could be converted to Christianity, you know. And one of the things I will leave with you, who has bewitched you? In other words, who has caused you to be, get yourself derailed and look at things going backwards? You don't want anybody or anything or any person to come into your life to bewitch you, to take you off the track, the plan, the purpose that is that God is leading you on. Because there's greatness on the inside of all of mm -hmm. us. And if God does not want any of us to go backwards, he wants us to keep moving forward. And that's the whole key. All those points that Crystal was making, you know, write those points down and reevaluate your life. But don't let anybody to bewitch you. Don't allow it. Don't allow people, persons, things, or anything to get you derailed. Because once you get on that track that God has you on, it's going to take a lot to slow that train down. But once you get on that momentum, you got to keep moving forward. you got to keep moving. you got to keep moving. And you got to keep striving. Don't move back. Don't even think about looking back. Because the moment that you look back, it's going to slow you down. And that's the reason why... When a lion roars, why do you think why a lion roars? A lion will roar is because it stuns him. And because when you get stunned, it, that's that moment where he can pounce on you. You know what? If the lion roars, let it roar and you just keep moving. Don't go backwards. Don't even look backwards. You heard a sound? Keep moving. And that's this movement that we're on right now. Don't, don't go backwards to the way you used to do things because you know what? It's not normal anymore. What we're doing right now, it's not normal anymore. Your, your old way, because the Bible talks about old things has passed away. Your old, so put it this way, the old ways of youth has not passed away. Now we've got to start looking forward now, because we're doing a new thing. Because he is doing a new thing in our life. Society has already dictated that we're doing a new thing. So you got to keep pressing your way 
force to Christ, you got to keep moving forward. And not, don't look back. Because it's very important. Don't forget about the exercise of his mind daily. We do this, we, every single day, so you can continuously keep getting wisdom, so you can constantly keep moving forward. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you for coming into our kitchen counter conversation today. Um, I just want to encourage you, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you will be alerted every single time a new episode is uploaded. And if you like this video, give it a good thumbs up and leave us a comment. Let us know. We love to engage with people. So let us know what is your new normal going to look like. And just make sure that you share this with your friends. We want to thank all of those who are continuing to support this movement, this love of mental health movement, so that we can change lives that we can take our life's challenges and see them with a new, healthy, and productive perspective. We'll see you on Wednesday next week. Love you guys.